video is for fellow YouTuber G Parks who asked me what does a sealed light look like? And so this, of course they look like a lot of different things. You can Google it. There's many manufacturers that have been making them for many years. But this is uh, one I have. It's a Pentax, an old um, Pentax ETH-120F. And so basically it's got a battery in here and a rotation sensor in here. You can see it's kind of round. And it's got a digital readout down here. Oh, it won't focus. There we go. And this telescope part, it's got a little, a little telescope-like thing that tips up and down. And then this whole thing can rotate too, but right now I have it locked. So when you lock it, you can turn these knobs to line it up very precisely so you can see the numbers changing there, horizontal or the vertical. And I've got it set to degrees. So, I'm going to try to show you through the telescope because that's really where it's all at. So, out there in the distance, it'll focus in a second, see that blue sign right in the middle? That's what I've got it pointed at. So, I'm going to come line it up like this. Okay, now I'm looking through the telescope on here. And you can sort of see the crosshairs. They're kind of a black, they look like the rifle scope crosshairs. And so I can adjust these knobs, see, and adjust this telescope up and down and right and left. So for example, if I wanted to check the angular height of the top of the sign, I would move it right up until the black line, which you can't really see very well. Maybe if I shift this or, well anyway there's a black crosshairs there and I can move it right to the top of the sign and so then I can see on my display that that's exactly 2.57 degrees above level and uh, that's this upper number here and you know it's level because they've, they have a bubble level right here and also, this one has a bubble level in the side here, which you can't really see, but... And then they've got these leveling screws here, so you can precisely level it before doing your uh, measurements. So now I'm going to unlock the uh, movements, and see now it just it rotates freely. And then, of course, this rotates around, too. It just goes around and around. And you can see as I rotate this one, the horizontal axis changes. And as I rotate the upper one, or the telescope, then the vertical axis changes. And so, you can see if I take and put this straight out to level, I can actually lock this and zero it right on to zero degrees horizontal. And that's pretty much straight out level. And if I were to look through the telescope, I would just see, well, we can look through there, but that's what's straight out level. Maybe if I focus it, the uh, oh well, it's hard to get a good camera picture through there. Anyway, of course, the whole thing's mounted on a tripod. And in order to make the readings accurate, or more accurate and verifiable, you can actually sight to a target, you know, wherever, sight through here like this. Take note of your readings and then flip it around and flip this around and sight again. And then you have to walk around and look at the display. Some of them actually have a display on two sides. Anyway, then you can see if you get the same readings both ways. And if you get the same readings both ways, then you know that the instrument is true within itself anyway. It doesn't mean it's level, but it's true within itself. So it's got another little feature. It's got a little mark right here so that you know what the, the center of the pivot of this is. So if you want to set up a 
a water level with a, a tube full of water from there and then out towards the cow then you can sight out and you can make sure that it's level within itself and you can also sight to here with another theodolite if you want to make sure that you know get the angle readings between two different theodolites so that's uh, that's what a theodolite looks like oh so this little thing here is just a, to help you sight it in I don't know if the camera will pick it up but since the telescope is like a 30x gain telescope oh yeah it's kind of hard to uh, find what you're looking for sometimes but there's a little triangular arrow that shows up in this little scope sight thing on top Oops, sorry to go there it is a little triangular ah perfect beautiful anyway you can take and point that at whatever you're looking for and then that'll get you in roughly the right um, direction and then you can go look through here the, through here and there it'll be except I think I moved up oh. oh well Oh, it's got one more cool thing. It's got called it's what's called a uh, optical plummet. So there's a little thing you can sight through right here. Oops, let, me, let me lock this. Okay, now it won't turn on us. And it actually looks down, straight down on the ground. So you can look through here, and again you see little crosshairs. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm not going to get good exposure on that, but... Can you see my... Yeah. Anyway, it looks straight out down onto the ground through the the center of the um, tripod. And so if you're over a survey marker, which I'm not, you can make sure that your theodolite is directly on top of it. So... Well, there you go, G. Parks. I hope that uh, answers your question as to what a theodolite looks like. Oh, there's other cool features, too. You can, um, like, you can zero set the horizontal scale. So now it's right around zero degrees right there. Wait, well, let me lock it, and then I'll zero set it, and now it's zero. See, and then I can go to the right or to the left. And then I can also change... Um, directions so if I'm turning one reference left or reference right um, oh no this one's this one's reference left or reference right it's just whether it's a positive or a negative value um, if I want to move the transit without or the theodolite without it counting I can press that and see now it locks it now I can turn it and nothing's happening and then I can lock it at its new position and then I can undo it. So, oops, I've got to hit it twice. I think I hit it too many times. There. Now it's, now it's moving. So that way you can subtract angles. Like you can, like, say you could measure the angular size of the cow. You zero it at her head and then move it over to her tail. And that's her angular size of the cow. And then you could move it over and then you know, get the angular size on that shed or something, and you could add them together that way if you needed to. By the way, I wonder what the angular size of the cow is. We might as well find that out. Let's see here. I'm going to see if I can pause this and line the cow up. Well, okay, the cow would not hold still. So instead, I am going to do the angular size of that fence post there. So I've sighted it into the left top corner of the fence post. Oh, come on, focus. And now I am going to zero the uh, horizontal axis. And now let's see if we can look through through here. See I got it sighted to the left side of the top of the fence post. I'm going to turn my knob over to here like that. And now I'm uh, on the other side. And now we look at our reading. Wait for it to focus. And it is 0 0.19 degrees angular angular width. That's not that's more narrow than the moon. Anyway, How's that?